So today we're going to do multiplication and division of decimals. And I don't know that that will take us the whole 50 minutes, but it will take us however long it takes. And I think I should start by reviewing multiplication of whole numbers. because I'm not certain that we've done this in this class. We definitely look at problems like, like that, where we multiply a number by a single digit integer. But, um, but what happens if we have multiple digits? Well, up to a point, it's kind of what you'd expect. We, again, we know what to do if we just have that six. I mean, we briefly reviewed that in this class. Seven times six is 42. Somebody tell me if I make a goofy mistake here. We write down the two, we carry the four. Six times two is 18, plus two is 22, carry the two. Six times one is six, plus two is eight. Now, what about the three? Well, the three is sort of the same, except that as you move along, we're going to do this multiplication in a second row, and we're going to put a zero there. Other than that, three times seven is 21. Carry the two. Three times two is six, plus two is eight. Three times one is three. Then you add. So kind of intricate, really. I'm breaking this down. We're really using um, the fact that multiplication distributes over addition, although we wouldn't necessarily put it like that. What we're really doing here is we're saying, well, 127 times 36 is one, two, seven times 30 plus six. So it's one, two, seven times 30 plus one, two, seven times six. And that's why we end up with this addition. This first row is one, two, seven times six. The second row is one, two, seven times 30. And then we add those up to get one, two, seven times 36. So that's the basic idea. And that's the reason we have this addition the reason we put a zero here is to keep our columns consistent we have a ones column and a tens column 
and a hundred column. And this three is really 30. So three times seven is 30 times seven. And that 30 will give you an extra zero at the end of the product. And that's why we put that zero in. And if we had like, one, two, seven times 360. Well, making our life easy, I guess, by having that zero there, zero times seven, zero times two, zero times one. Then because that six is really a 60, everything times six will have a zero in the ones place. And let's see. Seven times six is 42. Six times two is 12 plus four is 16. Six times one is six plus one is seven. It's easy to do on the whiteboard. On paper, you, if you do a lot of carrying, you can get quite some ugly scratch work. And now down here, we're going to get two zeros because now we're going to multiply by three, but three is really 300. So when we multiply by hundreds, we get two zeros always. Um, three times seven is 21. Three times two is six, plus two is eight. Three times one is three. And now again, we're doing big addition here. Zero, two, seven, 15, carry the one, three and one is four. Put in a comma to make it clear what number that is. So multiplying decimals is um, by hand is kind of good news, bad news. I mean, the bad news is that multiplication by hand is kind of tedious, and it's not going to become less tedious by putting decimals in. The good news is that putting decimals in doesn't make the problem much worse either. So to multiply by decimals, we do the multiplication uh, zoom, what are you doing? Here we go. We do the multiplication and we ignore the decimals when we do the multiplication. Then we're going to count the decimal places in the product. Then we're going to throw in a decimal point so that the answer can 
was that many decibel places. Um, it sounds that's a pretty awkward explanation that's probably making it sound more complicated than it is. Let's say we want to multiply 12.4 times 1.17. So maybe I'll go out of order and I'll say Well, there are three numbers after the decimal place. So we're going to have three decimal faces in our answer. And then we do the multiplication. And when we do the multiplication, I mean, I'm not even going to bother writing the decimal places in. You could write them in if you want to. But when we do the multiplication, we're ignoring the decimal places. So one and a two and a four, one and a one and a seven. We do this multiplication and okay, seven times two is 28. I mean, seven times four is 28. Seven times two is 14 plus two is 16. Seven times one is seven, plus one is eight. I'm actually not great at mental math. If you think I'm doing something wrong, feel free to shout out because I probably am. But um, we'll put a zero there and then we'll multiply that one. What a nice number is one. One times four, one times two, one times one. And then without really going out of my way to, I made my life easier with those two ones. Um, so now this is a hundred. So we have two zeros. One times four, one times two, one times one. One times four, one times two, one times one. Add it all up. Eight, six and four is 10, carry the one. Eight and two is 10, and four is 14, and one is 15, carry the one. Two and one and one is four. One and nothing is one. So the answer as we have it written, is 14,508, which hardly seems as if it could be correct, and of course it isn't. We now remember, well, we had three places after the decimal, one from the 12.4, two from the 1.17, and now we go down here and we count one, two, three. And we put the decimal point there to give us 3.17.
three places after the decimal. 14.508. So that's multiplication by decimals. Um, division by decimals is going to be the same kind of good news, bad news. Again, the bad news is that long division is kind of annoying. The good news is that having the decimal doesn't really change that much. Let's start by doing an example. where the number up there is a decimal and the number in the bottom isn't. So something like 338.56, a decimal, divided by 23. We set up the crossbar We will only think of this decimal place once during this entire process. And it's at the very start of the process. We'll lift the decimal place up and put it right there in above the crossbar. Otherwise, this will be division as normal. Or I guess I should say division mostly as normal. 23 does not go into 3. I know a lot of people would probably skip this step and say, okay, it does go into 33. But I honestly find long division kind of hard, and I find that I make fewer mistakes if I write everything out. So 23 does not go into 3. 0 times 23 is 0. 3 minus 0 is 3. Carry the next digit down, or drop the next digit down, or bring, ring is probably the word that people use, bring it down. Now 23 does go into 33 once. 1 times 23 is 23. Do the subtraction, bring down the next number, which is eight. Um, I think the thing I like least about long division is that we get situations like this, where we're trying to ask ourselves, so how many times does 23 go into 108? Um, I want to say probably four times. We'll find out if I'm wrong. Um, four times 23. Is 92. Do the subtraction. 8 minus 2 is 6. Borrow 16. Drop the next number down. And aside from the fact that, um, sorry, what I'm trying to say is, I mean, we, put, we wrote this decimal here. We're now to the right of the decimal, but nothing changes. We just keep going. 
4 times 23. We already did that. Where are we? We're here. 23 into 165 is 7. That might require a little trial and error. I did this problem before class. Then 7 times 23 is 161. Subtract. Bring down this digit. Do the division. 23 goes into 46 twice. we end up with a remainder of zero. And I mean, I know I sort of said, oh, well, it's really not any different. I mean, there is a difference. When you divide one decimal by another, there is no guarantee that you're going to, to get a nice remainder of zero. Division can just keep going forever. I mean, we saw that with like one divided by three. But in this case, we get a remainder of zero, and our answer is 14.72. So what if we want to complicate things? What if we want to make the top be a decimal and the bottom also be a decimal? Three point five into forty eight point sixty five. Well, the good news is we're not going to have to learn some entire new process. We're just going to uh, going to use this process. To do division like this, we need that number in the bottom not to be a decimal. The the fundamental theorem of fractions comes to the rescue. The fundamental theorem of fractions says, well, if we multiply top and bottom by the same number, we don't change the fraction. And in particular, when we multiply the top and the bottom by 10, it doesn't change the fraction. But what it does do is give you a problem like we had in the previous frame. I have no clear memory of this. I suspect that when this material is presented to children, it's not presented in terms of multiplying by 10 and using the fundamental theorem. I suspect we just tell them, well, move that decimal to the right and then move that decimal to the right by the same amount, because that's what we're doing. Multiplying by 10 or by 100 or by 1,000 takes decimal points and moves them to the right. And then once we've got 35 into 486, Point five. Again, the only place 
the specimen is really going to do anything is at the very beginning of the problem when we copy it up. 3 to 35 does not go into 4. Multiply 0 times 35, get 0. Subtract, bring down. 35 does go into 48 one time. 35 times 1 is 35, subtract, bring down. So let me see. My instinct is that 35 goes into 1364 times, but not for the first time in life. My instinct was not correct. Four looks like it's too big. 35 is going to go into 138 three times. Then 35 times 3, I just did that. 105. Drop down the next digit, which is 5. And um, 35 goes into 315. I really don't know. Fewer than 10 times, 7, 8, 9. At this point, I just sort of flail around a little. Let's try 7. Let's see. 7 times 5, 35, 7, 21. 7 is too small. It will go in more than 7. Did you add the 136 and 105? What did you subtract that? Wait. Yeah. Three. Yeah. Yes. You are right. I made an error. Thank you for catching that. 6 minus 5 is 1. Three minus zero is three. The five drops down. So 35 into 315. And I mean, 10's too big because 10 times 35 is 350. I'm going to count down from 10. You, you add them again. Oh, oh. No, 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 no. They were um, subtracted. Oh, they were subtracted? Because this oh, that brought down. Oh, five is coming down from there. No problem. So nine times 35. Let's see, 45, 9 times 3 is 27. Ah, starting from 10 and counting down gave us, in fact, exactly what we need. We get a remainder of zero. Again, I mean, this problem, I just janked off some website that was designed to work nicely. You know that when we have decimals, there's no guarantee that we wind up with a remainder of zero. We might be in a position where we just keep dropping zeros down. 
But in any event, 13.9 is our answer. Mm -hmm. All right, and it's very early, but this is kind of a break in the course. Um, so we will start branding stuff um, Friday. I mean, hypothetically, brand new. I know if you were in Mr. Vogel's class, he kind of went a little nuts, but I will see you then.